Oi, pessoas, tudo bem com vocês? Então, hoje eu vou falar sobre meu minha primeira vez no Brasil. Eu vou falar sobre carnaval e comida e família. O que mais? Uh, vergonha, momento. Isso aí, isso aí. Passou vergonha? Passou engraçado? Isso, isso. Antes de começar, se inscreve no meu canal, vale como Jake, subscribe button, it's down there, so press it. Ding! That I'm likey. Me seeking no Instagram, vale como Jake, the link is down there if you want to follow me on Instagram. So, I arrived in Brazil, February 2020, for the first time in my life. I'd never been to Brazil before. I came to Rio de Janeiro for the first time, that was my first destination in Brazil. I came for the carnival season. When I first arrived in Brazil. It was like 7, I think 7 a.m. and yeah, I just remember seeing like the sun rising as we were coming into the airport. When I walked through the airport, I could see out the window the huge mountains. It really is that beautiful. You always see it in like pictures and films and to actually see like the mountains in real life of Rio de Janeiro was, uh, I was like, it was a very good first impression. So my first place uh, we went to, I uh, went with my girlfriend, was to see her family. She has family in Copacabana. So I went straight to Copacabana, visited her great aunt, her great aunt and cousin and other family members, which I didn't expect to be there, but they were there because it's Brazilian it families. Really. And <laughs> you, you, always get, you always get more than what you expect with Brazilian <laughs> families. So <laughs> when I arrived there, I was expecting, you know, just, just an auntie and an uncle. But no, there was about five or six other people. I didn't, I didn't even know who they were. They just kept turning up and walking through the door. <laughs> I thought I met everyone. I thought, all right, because I get quite anxious about meeting new families as well. So I was just like, please don't tell me this. Give me another person come through the door. And then like another person came through the door and they had children. I was like, oh no, they don't, they don't speak English. I don't speak Portuguese. Um, actually, uh, some, of the, some of the cousins spoke some English, actually pretty good English. Um, so that was nice, that was nice for me to be able to communicate with them, um, made it a bit easier for me. The family was very, very welcoming and since it was early, uh, breakfast was there waiting for me and this breakfast consisted of everything, eggs, uh, bread of course, cake, of course there was cake, uh, cake for breakfast, yeah, I think they wanted to, you know, they wanted to cover all bases, they were like, we don't know what this guy's gonna like. He, he's he's a gringo. He come all the way from England. Let's just buy, let's just buy everything and cover all bases. <laughs> yeah, just arriving in in Copacabana. Uh, I don't know. It felt like a dream. Uh, I know it sounds like cheesy to say that, but like, I think after being on a long flight, you were very tired when catching a taxi. Oh, so I should mention the taxi journey. The taxi journey was, yeah, it was kind of. I didn't know what to expect to be honest, but I was just kind of like looking out the window. And I heard like about Rio de Janeiro and it being dangerous and such and such. And I kind of like, I kind of noticed some small details about like all the windows are blacked out uh, and you don't drive with the window down. Um, so just make sure that the car is cool and it's not hot. So the, the taxi was never hot. And I kind of got the idea that it wasn't a good idea to unwind the window just in case. Driving through like Rio de Janeiro is quite amazing to see like all the favelas. It's something that people always talk about and actually seeing them in real life. You realise like how, how condensed that population is. How like there's so many houses in, in a small small area um, built up on a hill. Which is, it's just it's quite unique. Eventually we moved over to a apartment in Ipanema. We stayed in an Airbnb. And uh, yeah, it was right next to the beach, so it was perfect. Like, just very nice to like walk five minutes to the beach. Yeah, the first night, first evening on the first day, you went to the Apodor, 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 to watch the sunset, and it was, yeah, it was beautiful. Um, but what I will do, I'm, now I'm gonna answer some questions from what you guys have sent me on Instagram, um, and I'm gonna answer them. Primera pregunta. Uh, a primeira impressão que tive quando chegou. Uh, so what was my first impression in Brazil when I arrived, yeah? Well, I think I kind of answered that question in the last few minutes of this video. Uh, beautiful, um, amazing, and yeah, in, in Rio de Janeiro I would say like a very nice vibe. Um, 
just those three words I'm gonna say. Twice blockos will say foi e okay asho. Okay, so this is about carnival and which blockos did I go to and what did I think about them? My girlfriend obviously being from Brazil, being to carnival before um, kind of had a knowledge about blockos. We kind of went to small ones, mostly small ones, in Santa Teresa, and that was like the first place that I went to as well for the for the carnival. And it's still like a lot of people, but compared to like other blockos, a lot more smaller. It's the perfect kind of party. It's just somewhere where you can just like get into the busyness and also come outside of it as well. Yeah, my first impression was just this is exactly how I want it to be. Also, another thing was like going to the blockos is how easy it is to have get everything like you need so if you want a beer there's always the guys that are passing through with the little fridges freezers full of cold beer which is perfect like it's nothing's ever too far or far away if you want to buy some food you can get some food um and you could just kind of walk with the crowd listen to the music and as soon as you need another drink there's always another guy passing by you guys are geniuses when it comes to the carnival. We have like a small carnival in London called Notting Hill Carnival. It's a celebration of the Caribbean communities in London. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's a carnival essentially. Uh, it lasts for three days and I've been to that and yeah, it's not, I'm not even, I'm not comparing it to carnival in Rio. It doesn't compare, but like in terms of how to do a carnival, like if I compare about like how to get to places like you guys are you you mastered it i mean proximo pergunta well my vagonia que passo aqui when i went to my girlfriend's family house in brasilia basically when i took a shower we have these little things in brazil which we don't have in england i'm gonna put a picture up anyway so you know exactly what i'm talking about i didn't really take much notice of it before i took a shower while it was closed and because i didn't really like know like it opens and closes. I just didn't pay any attention to it. I didn't think about it. Like here we just have the hole in it. You, you put an actual plug in it. Like you don't actually like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I can't explain. Anyway, I took a shower and I left it closed. <laughs> and about five minutes into the shower, there was a little like uh, a bit of a, a puddle growing. And I kind of thought like, Oh, they must be like blocked, the drains must be blocked, like it must be taking a while to go down. And then it started, it started going through the door, underneath the door and out into the other room. Basically I kind of flooded the house a little bit. My girlfriend's mum was shouting like something, I don't know what she was shouting, I was thinking oh sh it must be me, like I, I'm the reason. And then I just realised that that little thing, you have to turn it to let the water down. So like after after flooding the house, I realised that I'm supposed to turn that thing. Obviously not being able to communicate, I couldn't really like justify my reasons for doing it. If I, I just had to kind of like accept the fact that I made a stupid mistake and that I could make no excuses for it. Próximo pergunta. Nos conta de alguma situação engraçada que tu passou. Okay, so I'll always remember this one in the first week. Basically, when we were in Rio, my girlfriend's cousin, who was also visiting Rio uh, and staying at her aunt's house, uh, her little daughter had a birthday party. And yeah, I had to go and meet more people. I was a little bit anxious about that, like more people um, that I can't communicate properly with. But it's all part of it. It's all part of, you know, traveling. I was there enjoying myself and, you know, people were like suddenly getting up and I was thinking, what's going on now? Like, what, what are we doing now? Are we eating food? I stood up and then everyone started singing, singing. And I just realized they started to sing happy birthday. And basically I didn't know any of the words and they were clapping. Bada bains, bada volse. Now I know the words. I didn't know any words. Um, my girlfriend went to the toilet. So I was just by myself. I didn't have any like backup. I didn't have anyone to, to say like, what are the words? Cause I didn't know who to communicate with. Um, so I was just there by myself, just pretending to know. Bada Da, 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 da. Uh, happy birthday to you. Yeah, it was, it, I felt awkward. They probably didn't even notice, but for me personally, I was like, ah, why does this have to happen? Why did my girlfriend have to go to the toilet <laughs> while they doing. sing happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> so why at this moment, why when everyone stands up, I was just sat in, sat in a chair with my beer and everyone gets up and I start looking around me like, oh, what's going on? Like, no, what's going on now? And I thought, I just stood up as well. And then everyone started singing, and I was just like, oh no, why are they singing? And I kind of realised, oh, the cake and the, the candles and... Uh. 
So that was a little bit, it was a little bit, uh, it was a funny situation anyways. Ok, acho do clima na primeira semana no Brasil. Uh, muito, muito, muito calor. Two times where I felt like I was gonna die. We went to the Sugarloaf, Pão de Açúcar. I decided that I wanted to walk up the first part. There's a little like hiking path. And I really wanted to, I love hiking, so I wanted to do a little bit of hiking up to the first part. And yeah, it's only like 30 minutes, but it was so hot, so humid. Um, my, my shirt was completely wet and yeah, I, was, I realized it wasn't a great idea. Second time was watching Flamengo play in the football stadium. Obviously, um, I think like the humidity and the heat was like a bare peak at that time. And on the day, yeah, it was a, it was in the in the evening, and in the stadium, I just felt ill. I was so hot. So, yeah, that was super super hot for me. A coxinha é realmente apaixonante para quem é do outro país. Yeah. Fala sobre a comida você gostou e sobre as sobremesas acho muito doce. I love the cakes from Brazil. It's one of my favorite things. I love pudim. I love brigadeiro. I love all the bolos from Brazil. I love the food in Brazil. It has such a good variety. We went to like kind of a posh, a boutique, boteco, and had food there and it was kind of like churrasco. And like they put it on my plate and started curling it up for me. And I was like, Jesus, I thought they were going to start feeding it to me at one point. <laughs> I was like, whoa. The service was very good in, 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 in that place. Loads of food. I was surprised by the portions. Coming from England, we always say that, like, the USA, they, they do, like, crazy portions of food. But I think Brazil kind of does the same thing as well. Like, compared to here in Europe, um, the portions are very big. So I was quite, like, surprised by this as well. Okay, we'll say Asho do Carnival. Carnival was everything I wanted it to be and more. I think, like, I really enjoyed it. I know some people have their preference about kind of which places they like to go for carnival but for me being in here at de janeiro was amazing for carnival we were staying in epanema and then we moved over to flamengo because we wanted to be closer to some some blocos in that side of the city and like i remember waking up there the first morning and around 6 a.m i could just hear the drums and it was the first day that we planned to actually go out and go to the blocos i just remember thinking like how am i gonna drink this early um because I'd like to party. When I party, I like to drink. So it was like my, my main thought on my mind. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. I, I love the uh, freedom, the atmosphere. Like, you know, here we don't, we have, it's common to have like a lot of festivals. It's very common to go to festivals and it's kind of like a five day thing. We don't always guarantee good weather. The festivals are always located in like a field. So you kind of have to commit to staying in that place, that field for five days. Whereas the carnival is like, it's in the whole city, so you can just go wherever you want, it's huge. You can be in more relaxed places, you can still go to restaurants and stuff. It, it's, for me, it's like the perfect party. Like, I 100% want to go back again for carnival. Você se fantasia de que? So, my girlfriend kept saying like, we need to dress up, and I was kind of like, yeah, like it's carnival, like I'm not gonna wear like this kind of stuff, for example. But I think she kind of, suggested more kind of you know dress up as something um, and that's one thing that I didn't really understand until like I went to the blockos and realized that people were actually dressing up as people so perhaps like me being British maybe I could have dressed up as Sherlock Holmes or something like that I don't know so, yeah I don't know how well I was fitting in because like uh, still I could people could tell I wasn't from Brazil but I never actually no one never said to me Britannico Britannico oi Britannico it's always like oi Americano Alamão, 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 German or Argentino, something like this. Um, so I was either Amer American, I was either German or I was Argentinian, but I wasn't British. They didn't identify my Britishness. So definitely going to go dress as Sherlock Holmes next time or Boris Johnson. Qual cena você presenciou no Brasil que te marcou mais? The first, the first blocker in Santa Teresa. Yeah, like we caught an Uber. So there went up the steep hill and I got out of the Uber and I seen like this big crowd. I walked towards it. I think I I don't think I had a drink with me, so immediately I I seen everyone with a beer in their hand and dancing and I was like, Whoa, I'm not prepared for this. I need a beer. 
I need two beers. I just remember it, and as soon as I walked in, I was like, this is, this is, I don't know, I just felt good. I felt, this is, because I was waiting for so long to go to this carnival, so I didn't know what to expect. Um, and as soon as I arrived there, like, I think my, like, I think I just kind of, all my, all my questions were kind of just answered. Like, yes, this is perfect. Antes de ver ao Brasil, pela primeira vez, qual visão de nossa país você tinha? Yes, it's true what people say. A lot of people think Brazil is just Rio de Janeiro. Um, and I probably was one of those people. The thing is, you have to understand for like us, we don't really, we're not exposed to like um, the real Brazil as I know Brazil now. Like we're not exposed to that. Like you just don't see it. Um, they always just show like Rio. Um, and I had the same impression to be honest. I just like, I remember I had an opportunity to go to Brazil in 2015. Um, I was traveling in South America, but I didn't go um, because I don't know, I just thought like, yeah, my friend was going to Rio de Janeiro and I thought about doing the same thing, but I didn't. Um, and I, because it basically I thought like Rio is just gonna be what I've seen in the films now. I'm glad that my opinion has been changed and like I did get to visit Brazil and really see like more than just Rio de Janeiro. Like for me, I was, Rio de Janeiro is everything and more, but there's also like the other places that I went to in Bahia and Brasilia and Goiás and all the other places that I know about in Brazil now that I would love to travel to. There's so much more than just, just this in Brazil. Você tem familiares aqui no Brasil? Not by blood, but yeah, my girlfriend's family lives in Brazil. So um, yeah, I get called meu neto and meu filho. So yeah, I, I guess I do have family in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very happy to have um, family in Brazil that I can go and visit. It's another reason to go back. Huh? Sua família já veio para o Brasil? No. Just me. I'm the only one from my family to have set foot in Brazil. Um, but after being in Brazil, I was I'm very uh, very keen to take my parents to Brazil um, to show them what it's like. I'm sure my parents would really enjoy it there. And yeah, I really want to take them soon. So hopefully, I can do that. Você já ouvi falar em escola de samba? Se sim qual a sua preferida? Okay, so interesting thing about like the carnival is that my knowledge of the samba schools was zero. Our exposure to Brazil and like the carnival is completely uh, one dimensional compared to the reality of what the carnival is. And every year when carnival happens in Brazil, we have like the tabloid newspapers here will show like all the pictures and just write little captions. And they always show like carnival, they show like pictures from the parade, but it's always like, certain pictures where it makes you believe that it's just kind of like women dressed in small dresses and kind of exposing themselves. But after going to, I actually managed to go to San Bordrum. I'm going to put the word down now, just like Sapucaí, Sapucaí. I was lucky enough to go to there. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. When I went to this place, um, it, it really like opened my mind to how much work and dedication goes to into this time of year in Brazil and um, all the work that that is done by people to compete because I didn't realize it was an actual competition I didn't know that um, and I remember watching it and just looking at all these people that are just working hard and um, in these samba schools in these parades and you can see like the dedication and how much hard work it must have been because they're walking for such a long time um, and just constantly dancing, playing the, the, the instruments. So I was like really amazed by this and it's, it's truly like it's so beautiful and so like impressive when you see it in real life. It is like, I, I remember just looking at it thinking like it's such a like a human art form. Like it's, it's not a painting but it almost like when you're there it looks like a painting. Like I was very impressed with the Samba schools and I was like very happy that I had the opportunity to go and see them live. It's basically opened my mind up to like what it was all about, what carnival is about. It's not just the parties but it's also this like it's what people literally train and 
prepare for every year for this moment and right there you could see it like you could see how much work had gone into it i definitely want to learn more about the samba schools and next time hopefully i'll know exactly who i'm watching and what school is which um so i can have like a maybe a preference but i didn't actually know which ones which when i was there. you do have a, a samba school which is your preference and put in the comments and let me know which one that i should follow but yeah in general i mean my first week my first week in brazil everything that i wanted and more um the food is amazing i realized the people are great yes here it does have its problems yes it is dangerous um lucky for me i was informed by my girlfriend about how to be careful there so i took all the necessary precautions i tried not to be naive to it um so yeah it was sensible don't take valuables out I, I love filming stuff and believe me i wanted to take my my camera everywhere with me but i didn't well i took this camera instead this is what i decided to take it was this camera um so i took loads of pictures on this camera instead and i took my my other camera to to some tourist destinations i wasn't in any like dangerous or, or bad situations um I think because I guess I played it smart. <laughs> I guess I just, I wasn't ignorant to, to the, the realities of Rio de Janeiro, I like to think. Um, so I respected that it's dangerous, um, unfortunately, but that's the way and that's the reality of it. So yeah, I respected that. But other funny moments, I guess. See, I was waiting outside a pharmacy, right next to it was a supermarket and there was a drunk lady and, um, I think she tried to steal some stuff and yeah what was funny is is that like it, when I think of this situation like this happens in London this happens in England in places like I've seen this before drunk people I've seen people trying to steal things but like the way we behave in Britain is different to like the way Brazilians behave because like everyone came out of the shop and started watching this woman get arrested and including the people that are working in the shop. They're meant to be working in the shop, serving customers, but they're outside with the customers watching this person get arrested. I'm stood there, you know, Mr. Gringo stood there with his little shopping bag, um, and I'm just pretending like nothing's going on because that's what British people do. <laughs> we just like, we, we were like, um, when someone, when, when there's a scenario, a scene like this, like it's very typical for British people just to like, we just look around, we're like, yeah, it's just, be polite, you know, don't want to look at them, don't want them to be embarrassed, don't want to, like, focus attention on them. It's a, it's a, you know, it's someone getting arrested, like, they don't want people watching, like, I wouldn't. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't, I was just trying to ignore it, I was just sit there casually, like, yeah, whatever, yeah. Just pretending like it wasn't happening, and all these Brazilians were stood outside, going, Gee novo, Gee novo. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I, I, I realised, like, I understood what Gee novo meant, I, I know that new, novo is new, so I was like, they're basically saying, like, what's new or like again again what's new like it's, it's expression in english what's new like same old same old um so yeah it's quite a funny scenario um so that's it guys if you do have any other questions for me about my first week in brazil or just my time in brazil in general post in the comments and i will try to answer as many questions as i can if if you want to ask me anything just ask me post in the comments let me know um satan's gonna be normal channel that i'm likey me seeing on instagram and yeah, that's it, that's logo. Ciao.